In this video, I'm going to talk about these old voltage regulators that were used on Kohler engines in the mid-60s. They were made by Delco Remy. The name is stamped in the top of the original ones. This one has the curved mounting, so it mounts on the starter generator. There's three terminals coming out the front. The left one's marked L for lights or load, where you would connect your lights and other electrical devices. The middle one is marked BAT for battery, and the right one is marked F for field. It connects to the F terminal on the starter generator, which goes to the field coil. These are four terminal regulators because there's another one on the bottom where you can't see it. That one back there is marked GEN for generator. It connects to the A terminal on the starter generator, which goes to the armature. I'll take the cover off and show what's in here. There's two electromagnetic coils. Each one is activating a set of points. One's normally open and one's normally closed. On these old ones, each one is adjustable. Here's another style. It has the same cover, the same three screw terminals. It looks the same on the bottom. There's that hidden generator terminal. But this one bolts onto the flat surface. Everything else is the same. Here's another style. It has the same cover. The same three screw terminals on one side. And it has another one coming out the back. If you look at the bottom, it's the same as this one, but they changed that one terminal can't see that one. If you look at this one, it's the same thing, but they changed that one terminal so you could get to it. That regulator came out of a Cub Cadet box. I don't know if all Cubs use that style or not. Make sure these cardboard tubes are standing up straight. Then put the cover on without the screws and put the screws in last to make sure they go through the cardboard tubes properly. There's another style. The only one I have to show you is this new one. It's still in a sealed bag, so I don't want to open it. It still has the curved mounting on the bottom. It has three terminals on the side, but there's not one on the bottom. This is a three terminal style. They removed the L terminal, moved the BAT terminal to the left, and they moved the generator terminal from underneath to the middle. That covers the different styles. Next I'll show what I use to test and set up these regulators. This is a homemade power supply that I made years ago when I was messing with electronic stuff. It's made to power 12 volts and less. There's a knob here to adjust how much power it puts out. That would seem to be perfect for testing a regulator for a 12 volt system. But these regulators need to get into the 13 or 14 volt range when charging a battery. So I need more power. Here's another one. It's the first one I made. They're nice electronics projects if you're into that sort of thing. I'm going to connect these two in series so that I'll have an adjustable power source that will be in the correct voltage range for these regulators. I have some test leads with alligator clips on them here. First, I'll connect the positive of the lower power supply to the negative of the upper power supply. 
The positive of the upper power supply will be my plus voltage on this red lead. And the negative of the lower power supply will be my minus voltage on this white lead. Here's a quick drawing of how I'm going to connect the power supply. The positive from the power supply will be to the generator terminal. And the negative from the power supply will be to the ground or regulator case. First I'll connect the positive from the power supply to the generator terminal. I like to reach under from this side so I can clip onto the screw threads. The negative needs to go to the regulator frame. If this ground wire is in good shape you can connect to that. Now when I turn the knob on my power supply that will increase the voltage that's being put on that generator terminal. Here's my cheat sheet that shows the two different tests that have to happen. First all I care about is this top part because I'm going to test the first coil. This says the first coil should close somewhere between 10 and 12 volts. I forget where I found that spec at. Based on my testing, I like to get it between 11 and 11 and a half volts. That's referring to the volts from the power supply. I'll be turning the knob to adjust the voltage, and we're going to watch for when the contacts close. So how do you know when the contacts close? I'm going to use an ohmmeter to check the resistance between two points. And when the contacts close, the resistance reading on the meter will change. On the right side of my cheat sheet, it shows how to connect the ohmmeter to test the resistance. This little symbol represents ohms, which is the amount of electrical resistance. If you haven't been exposed to this before, it's a way of measuring how well electricity flows through things. If the contacts are closed, there's no resistance. The meter shows all zeros, and the current can flow through the connection. If the contacts are open, that's so much resistance you can't measure it. So the meter shows OL, meaning the resistance is over the limit that can be measured. Next, the cheat sheet shows which terminals I need to check the resistance at. For the first test, I'm checking resistance between the BAT terminal and the GEN terminal. I have two alligator clips that are connected to the ohmmeter. The first one goes on this BAT terminal in the middle. The second one goes to the GEN terminal. Since it's underneath where I can't get to it, I'm going to clip on this rivet that's part of that terminal. Now this meter on the right will be set to measure DC voltage. This meter on the left is set to measure resistance. And it works a lot better if you disable the auto ranging and use the lowest range. That should read ohms directly, not milliohms or megohms. Now I'll turn on the power supplies. First I turn up the bottom power supply to about 5 or 6 volts. Then to increase the voltage after that, I'll adjust the top power supply. Notice the resistance reading is OL, meaning the points are open. The voltage is climbing. And there, when it got to 11.7 or so volts, the resistance reading changed to all zeros, meaning there's no resistance because the point's closed. 
Now the voltage is going back down and the points are still closed. When I get to about 10 and a half volts, the points open again. Now I'll go back up slightly and it closes at 10.7 back down slightly and it opens at 10.6 volts back up a little and it closes at 10.7 volts back down a little and it opens at 10.5 volts now I'm gonna take the voltage way low like about 7 volts that lets the points relax and return back to the stop. So now the points should have about a 20 thousandths gap. Now I have to go back up to 11.7 volts to get it to close again. Bringing the voltage back down. The points open at about 10.7 volts. If I don't go down much farther but come back up slightly instead, it closes at about 10.8 volts. If I stay in the 10 volt range, I can get the points to open and close with only a slight voltage change. That means the points are working good. That's it for test number one, so I'll remove these two ohmmeter leads. Now back to the cheat sheet. This says the second coil should open at 13 to 14 volts. I forget where I found that spec at. But based on my testing, I like to get it around 13.7 to 13.8 volts. On the right side of the cheat sheet, it says I'm going to connect the ohmmeter to the F terminal and ground, which is the frame or chassis. Here I'll connect one alligator clip to the F terminal and the other alligator clip to that braided ground wire. That's not right. The points should be closed now and the meter should be showing all zeros. Must be a bad connection. Yep, that ohm meter number is moving around. Okay, that's what it was. Clipping on that ground wire wasn't working, so I clipped on the terminal at the end of the ground wire. Now we're going to look at the meters again. The resistance reading is not all zeros. Maybe I still have a bad connection at the alligator clips. Or maybe the points are dirty but it's showing there's a little bit of resistance there. Right there at about 13.7 volts, the resistance number changes to around 60 or 70. In this case, when the points open, this reading don't show OL because there's a resistor in the circuit. So now the points are open, if I lower the voltage, the points close at 13.6 volts. Now I'll go back up slowly and the points open at 13.9 volts. Back down a little. The points close at 13.6 volts. Back up. They open at 13.9 volts. So that coil is acting properly because it always opens at the same voltage and it closes when the voltage comes down slightly. If you want to try this, 
The first hurdle to overcome is getting a good power supply. So how do you know if you got a good power supply? I can show you what makes a bad power supply so you'll be able to tell. Here's an example of a common power supply you might find in your house. It's an electric train transformer for HO or N scale trains it says. Let's see what happens. The voltage is climbing. But wait, what's that buzzing sound? Well, that's the points vibrating because the DC power supply is not doing a good job of filtering out the alternating current. The points are vibrating at 60 times per second because that's the frequency of the AC voltage in your home wall socket. When it's buzzing like that, you can't do the proper adjustments, so that just don't work. If you try this at home, and your relays are buzzing, you need a better power source. This is part one of a multi-part series. Next I'll start with an old regulator that don't work, and begin the process of making mechanical adjustments and electrical adjustments to get it to work right. Alright, that's it.